Hello YouTube, I'm Vince White. I'm an employment attorney and we are answering a publicly posted question from our YouTube channel. Uh, this question was posted 13 hours ago. So we're getting a little better on the response time. That's positive. And it was posted by YouTube user Anish Kal. And it was posted on our video entitled, What Constitutes Strong Evidence in a Workplace Discrimination or Sexual Harassment Claim? And I had an exchange with Anish. It went, we went back and forth a little bit. I'll read that into the record. Anish said, timeline is so key. Save the text. I agreed. I responded, yes, always. Document, 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 and save everything. Anish gets it. Then Anish asked, can I sue for multiple offenses? And I wasn't entirely sure what he meant, so I asked for clarity. And he responded, they terminated me after I filed a complaint about harassment. I tried to take FMLA leave as well. So that's our question, right? Can I sue for multiple offenses? Quick answer, yes. You have a little bit of background. There was a harassment claim and there was a request for FMLA leave as well. And then following that, um, there was a termination. So let's talk about that. First things first, when you say harassment, I'm going to assume sexual harassment or harassment motivated by some kind of discrimination, right? There's general harassment, and in most jurisdictions, that's not going to be actionable, but I, I suspect that's not what you're talking about. So I'm assuming we're dealing with either sexual harassment or discrimination-motivated harassment in the workplace. So those are, that's one set of potential claims. And then we have the FMLA claim, right, where you may have been terminated because you tried to exercise your rights under the Family Medical Leave Act. And your question was, can I sue for multiple offenses? Okay, so first things first, when you say sue, that means you're going to actually be filing in court. So I'm going to assume you meant pursue. Can you pursue multiple claims? Because that's going to include what you file with the EEOC, if you file something with a state or local agency, if you initiate an arbitration, or also if you're filing a litigation in federal or state court, right? And that's always key. Uh, and, and it's a key distinction because sometimes employers will try to find out if you sued a prior employer and you want to often be able to say, no, I haven't, because it's going to be better off for your career going forward. So yes, you can pursue multiple claims. Um, but the issue you're facing is they might not all go to the same place, right? If you're working, we're only going to talk about federal laws because I don't know where you are. I don't know what local laws apply. And I may not even be able to speak to those local laws because one, I may not know about them. And two, I may not be allowed to because bar associations are funny uh, and they try to protect their little their little bubbles of money, um, which to them is very important, perhaps more important than getting folks the help they need. But what do I know? I'm just some guy. All right. So your sexual harassment or discrimination motivated harassment claims, those under the federal laws, you got to file with the EEOC, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, but you can't really file that Family Medical Leave Act claim with the EEOC. So the upshot here is you got to keep an eye on your statutes of limitation because eventually, once you get your right to sue letter from the EEOC, you can take that, that sexual harassment claim or that workplace discrimination harassment claim and put it in federal court and then... You can also put your family medical leave that claim in the same lawsuit in federal court. 99% of the time you can, right? But here's the thing. The statute's limitation can be very short for the EEOC, 180 days or 300 days. So you got to get those filed timely. Or if you fail to file them timely, it is possible, entirely possible, even perhaps likely, that you will lose your federal claims because the federal government does not give a pew pew about your life or well-being, right? They, they'll be thrilled. They will be thrilled if you lose your claims. Less work for them, less for them to do. So right off the bat, you got to get everything filed timely with the EEOC. Check what your statute of limitations is in your state. Could be 180 days, as I mentioned, could be 300 days. 
Now, the EEOC and many locales will take forever to adjudicate your case. And it means it could be take forever for you to get your right to sue letter, which means your cases, those two claims, right? That sexual harassment case or the general, the, the uh, discrimination motivated harassment case could pend in the EEOC so long that your Family Medical Leave Act claim could expire under its much longer statute of limitations, which off the top of my head, I believe is two years. There are many EEOC cases, especially EEOC cases without a talented attorney on, on the plaintiff side that go past two years. Many. That is just how the EEOC rolls if there's not someone there to behave like an adult and make sure the case moves and that someone is doing the work for the government employees at the EEOC, right? So, yeah, they don't, again, give a flying pew pew about your FMLA claim or you. So you can tell them, hey, I uh, need you to move a little bit quicker because I got to I gotta file these cases together in federal court and my family medical leave, leave act claim, you know, it's going to it's gonna fall out of its statute of limitations pretty soon. So I need you to move. EEOC, average employee at the EEOC says, that sounds like a you problem. Sounds like maybe I don't care about that at all. And, and they don't, generally speaking. And again, there are amazing employees at the EEOC. I know some of them. There is a mediator in New York who has been helping people for decades, and she is incredible. Not going to use her last name. Her first name's Deborah, and she is the sun, the moon, the stars. She is incredible. Uh, and she's also the exception. It is a fallen agency that harms people more often than it helps them. Is what it is. Now, what you may have to do to bring all your claims together in the same federal action is pull your right to sue letter from the EEOC. This is not always so easy. It is very easy for an attorney who knows how to do it. It's very easy for an attorney who has relationships with people in certain offices. It is not easy often, depending on the jurisdiction, depending on the employees involved, for an unrepresented individual. So make sure you're not getting down to the wire on your statute of limitations for your FMLA claim. Because if you're like, oh boy, I've only got four months left in my FMLA claim, I better pull my right to sue letter. I legitimately do not know if you're getting your right to sue letter in time to file everything together in federal court. Like that's, that's the kind of lag we're talking if you're unrepresented. Okay. So I think this is way more information, Anish, than perhaps you, if I may call you Anish, as per your username, um, way more information than you actually asked for. But I think the added complexity adds value, maybe not for you, because you seem like you know what you're doing, but it adds, it adds value to people who are generally going to search this question in just like a search engine. Because if I just say, yeah, you can do that, people are not going to realize that there are things they have to do for that to work. And they're just going to hear yes, and then they're not going to check the boxes and do the legwork and they're going to lose claims. And when they lose claims, they lose money, they add risk. It's a nightmare. And I don't want that to happen to people. So that's why I'm making this almost 10 minute long video when we could have just said yes. The answer to your question is yes, but there's legwork to be done. I hope this was helpful. I hope I answered your question. I'm going to watch, track the comments on this video down below. And if you have further, further follow-up, I will try to make you an additional video if it was helpful. Folks, if it was helpful, please like and subscribe. It helps me to help more people just like you. And I got to tell you, the channel has been growing like crazy. Um, the channel has grown about 25% over the past two months. And that's huge just in terms of the number of people we call or number of people who, who reach out to us, call us with questions. It's big. Um, but I will... I will kind of say a lot of people are watching the videos and then calling me. Uh, like it's probably better if you can to post your question because like if you're just calling me like I got, I need two hours of Vince's time. My assistant's probably going to be like, yeah, get in line. It's not going to happen. My friend, like, <laughs> so, um, 
and she's very nice, but you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of calls coming in right now. So understand, please be, if you are calling, be understanding, like we're trying our best, but I'm not going to have the other attorneys at my firm who are busy helping our clients take time out of their day to answer your question. Cause if you're calling us on the YouTube channel, you're not our client then, right? Take care, everybody. Bye.